Hi there, this is Just a Girl in Camas, Alicia King, and I am talking to you today with my special guest, Mr. Mike Nerland. Hi, Alicia. Nice to see you. Mike is the superintendent of the Camas schools, in case you haven't heard. And Mike, one thing I want to ask you really quick, because a lot of people, what does the superintendent of the Camas school district do? What does your job entail? I think sometimes people are curious all that's under your umbrella. Well, that's a good question, Alicia. It really <laughs> encompasses many things. And um, I remember when I actually got offered the job and my, my middle daughter asked me that very question. And uh, I told her, well, you know, one of the things that involves is a lot of meetings. And she looked at me, she said, well, you hate meetings. And so, you know, it, uh, it does involve a lot of meetings. It, um, the, the great thing about being a superintendent though, and you know, I've been a, a, a teacher and I've been a building principal and as mm -hmm. a superintendent, I get the opportunity to work with um, our staff at all levels. I get the opportunity to work with our community, uh, to build partnerships, to work with our, our parents. Mm -hmm. And I, I get the ability to look at, uh, I guess, more over the, the bigger picture and, um, you know, what we can do as a learning community to provide, you know, the best learning opportunities for our kids that, as, as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel, you know, in my role, I'm... Uh, I'm the voice for the district, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm telling you, the best part about being superintendent is just the, the great team that I get to work with each and every day. Mm -hmm. And when I say team, I mean our students, our staff, our parents, our um, city leaders, business community. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what makes Camus unique, is mm -hmm. we have such a great partnership. And people support public education. They see the value of it. And so, you know, I'm. Uh, uh, I guess I see myself as kind of a, um, you know, a, a person that tries to provide working with those different groups, provide learning opportunities um, that will benefit our kids as they approach graduation and beyond graduation. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I love actually about this position, and because I did a little bit of research, and you just stated that you have been a teacher, you have been a principal, and so it's not like you just came into this position taking over and overseeing these things without really being in those places where a lot of people are that you're helping guide and understand their day as a principal of a high school because you were the principal of Camas High School, right? Right, I was, yes. Right. I, I was um, actually, a, um, I've been an elementary, middle, and uh, high school principal um, as well as a elementary, middle, and high school teacher. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do believe that's important. Um, you know, on our district office team, what we call cabinet, um, our department heads, the deputy superintendent, we have a good blend of those that those of us that have been in the classroom as practitioners and those that uh, that haven't and are able to look at you know we'll say our budget in a different way but I think having been um, been in the classroom been a building principal I think it gives you a better understanding of what and imp what impacts um, unintended or intended that a we'll just say a budget cut might have mm -hmm. what the, how's that going to impact the mm -hmm. student and teacher in the classroom mm -hmm. and um, I think unless you're you've done that you don't really see the uh, um, you know some of the outlying uh, decisions that are made be it by a school board which we have an outstanding mm -hmm. school board or the state legislature or the federal legislature I mean they make you know their intent is always good. Uh, they want to just like just like we all do provide you know outstanding learning opportunities for our kids. But um, I think unless you are actually out there working in a classroom or a school, sometimes you don't see the unintended consequences of decisions that are made mm -hmm. um, at those levels. Mm -hmm. Well, part of why I wanted to talk to Mike today is that Mike is actually. What do we call it retiring from this position or stepping down? What, how would you word that? Well, I would say, you know, I, I told, this is my 20th year in the Camas School District, and it's my 33rd year as a public educator. And I actually had told the board this last fall that this was going to be my last year. I was going to be mm -hmm. stepping down. Um, you know, I, I feel like the, uh, the district's in a good spot, and I didn't want to make a public announcement until after we were able to pass the bond, which, mm -hmm. you know, another great... Uh, uh, reason that our community is uh, so supportive and our, our, the education that we provide our kids is so great is that support with the passage of the bond. 
Um, I just knew that it was time to to do something else. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, I really wouldn't call it retirement because I, I'm not really retiring. Um, I spent two full days with my wife, and she said, you better go out and find a new full-time job. <laughs> um, but um, that one, <laughs> I think that can be an issue in the retirement yeah, phase. Yeah, <laughs> because she, she did actually. Uh, she's a... Uh, this is her first year out of the classroom. She was a classroom teacher, uh, and she's uh, retired or stepped down. She wants a little time by herself yeah, first. She's doing yoga and quilting and hanging out with her friends and her daughters, and you know, Great. so yeah. It's, and I'm happy for her. Great. Um, but uh, you know, I knew I was going to do something else. I had some opportunities. Uh, I had some calls about doing some consulting, mm -hmm. um, maybe some teaching at the college level. Mm -hmm for upcoming principals and teachers. And then this opportunity at ESD 112 presented itself as uh, the assistant superintendent of teaching and learning, which really intrigued me because, you know, as I mentioned, my career is as, um, you know, starting in a classroom, building principal and, super, and district Evolving. superintendent. So this is something that um, working with an ESD that, that is made up of 30 school districts, um, Wow. 100,000 students uh, throughout Southwest Washington and working on uh, programs to provide um, equity. You know, uh, we are blessed here in Canvas. Mm -hmm. Our kids mm -hmm. get wonderful opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at some of the, the, the schools up the gorge or out by the beach, you know, um, Lyle, White Salmon, some of those districts, ESD really... Uh, through working together and and providing a more kind of a co-op mm -hmm. uh, we can we can provide some of those same opportunities for those kids that might not get it otherwise distance learning um, you know different things like that and so you know um, the mission of the ESD is to create um, equitable learning opportunities for all students and to provide support for those districts um, all the districts be it Vancouver or Evergreen which are part of the ESD mm -hmm. Camus, um, or like I said, you know, some of the smaller districts as well. So I look forward to it. It's it's fresh. It's a new challenge, and mm -hmm. it it it's kind of a broader reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like that um, we are so fortunate to be in such a wonderful school district, and people are moving here for the school district, and it's filling up very quickly, as you know. I mean, you've seen a large growth in your time here. So there are um, students out there, and I think everyone deserves a wonderful ed education. Absolutely. You know, it seems like public education gets criticized, and I think um, unfairly, because I believe it's the best education system in the world. And it is the best education system because every student that comes to one of our schools any of one of the schools up the gorge or a school in Philadelphia or mm -hmm. Chicago, we take them in, you know, we teach them, we provide opportunities for growth. However, it's not equitable across school systems. And, you know, the great things that we are doing here in Camas, any student would benefit from. And, and, you know, I know that when we talk about priorities for our nation, Public school, public education has to be the number one priority because, you know, 90% of our kids go to public schools mm -hmm. and that's their future. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, if, if in this position in a little way, if, if we can replicate some of the great things we're doing here in Camas mm -hmm. and spread it out, uh, I'll feel good at, about that at the end of the day. Great. Well, in talking about your time here at Camus, and I know this is putting you on the spot and this is going to be hard to choose, but if you had to pull one experience or moment or a time that has meant the most to you or really impacted you, what do you think? What do you think? Oh, you boy. You know, pulling out one, one experience, um, that that's difficult. I, I will say the... Uh, I've had the opportunity to, um, since I've been here 20 years, and I started as an elementary principal and then went on to um, high school principal and superintendent. I've had the opportunity to give, hand a diploma to kids that I had as kindergartners when they were at Lacamas and wow. see them grow <laughs> and uh, you know progress through uh, the different schools. And I've had that same opportunity with all three of my children to, um, 
to watch them grow. They Two of them started out at Lacamas when I was principal there, mm-hmm. and uh, the other was at JDZ when it was still a school. But, um, you know, to be involved in their lives as their, as their father as well as their principal and superintendent cool. and, and see the culmination of that and hand them that diploma, a pretty special, special moment. And just seeing... We've had so much, our students have had so much success in in many different ways, you know, that uh, um, it just makes me very proud of of the accomplishments of of this learning community, the Camas School District. And so um, I've been blessed. I've been very blessed to be part of this school district and part of this community. And uh, we'll continue to be part of this community. It's our home. You know, this is where when we brought up our children and this will always be home to us and I'll, you know, with my position with the SD, I'll still be able to, to work in a different way mm-hmm. with, with uh, mm-hmm. Cama School District and um, um, it's a great place to live, work, learn and play. That's right. Well, I have to say, I sure hope we still see you sitting at the Camas football games and um, that type of thing. Absolutely. And I do, you know, I've been at a couple school events recently in some grade schools and actually throughout the year and our paths have crossed at different times. And I do, one thing that really has stuck with me is that when I watch you interact with the kids or say hi to someone, um, it's very sincere, and I can tell that you're not just there because it was on the appointment that day. And I just wanted to say that I really admire that about you. Um, you. I see how you care about the students, and I think that means a lot. I appreciate that, Alicia. I, I can tell you, um, the further you get away from the classroom, the less interaction you have with students. And, um, you know, that was something, especially. Um, you know, being away from the building after I became superintendent, mm-hmm. uh, I really did miss that that interaction mm-hmm. with with students. That's what being a teacher, that's what being an educator is all about. And so, you know, whenever I get an opportunity to to be able to go into a school or just come and visit classrooms, I really enjoy the interaction yeah, with with tell. our kids. Yeah, I can tell. There's just such great kids, and uh, having the preschool right here has been um, amazing. Just Fun. to go and and you know see what you know our future graduates are, are are doing and, and they know. are doing such great things. It's cool. Yeah, it is fun. It's cool. All right. Well, before we end, I have a couple inside scoops on some things that I just want to ask you about really quick. Sure. Um, I heard about a chicken dance, and <laughs> I'm not sure what what that means. So, can you help us out with the chicken dance here? Yeah. What, um, what was that? Actually, the chicken dance um, started out at Lacamas uh, as kind of a, a way that, you know, we would celebrate on Fridays at lunchtime mm-hmm. when the students were having lunch. Nice. Uh, we would put on some uh, chicken dance music and uh, everybody would get up and we'd do the chicken dance. Oh my gosh, I and love then, it. And then it, it grew into a, uh, in the early days of the foundation, it grew into a foundation auction item. And so uh, the chicken For dance, you to do the chicken dance? Yes, at, some, at, at people's homes. <laughs> Wow. And so, yeah. I didn't see that at CEF this year. Well, you know, um, the the last time that I that I actually visited a home and did the chicken dance, I used to actually have a chicken outfit that that Dara McNeese would provide for me when she had a um, a costume store in downtown Camas. Wow. Well, she sold out, and so um, I got the Skyhawk outfit, which isn't really a chicken; it's blue. <laughs> And I went over to, um, it was actually Bob Ingalls' house, and Bob has run the uh, bond and levy campaigns for us for many years. But he had gotten the auction item, and I think his middle daughter was like 9 or 10 at the time. It was middle of July, and I, I lived about four or five blocks from Bob, and so I wore the chicken outfit, not the head driving, but so I went in, and, and it's... it's um, Anytime I did the chicken dance at somebody's house, the kids were very excited, I which bet. was great. Like, very excited. I bet they were. And so uh, we did the chicken dance, and I was in the Skyhawk outfit, and the kids were excited. And Can we do it again? Well, what are you going to say? I mean, Right. It's, you can't say no. It's a birthday party, and they bought it as an auction <laughs> item. And um, Yeah, the second go around, I was sweating profusely, and um, for a minute there, I thought I might go down. And so <laughs> that was the last time it was auctioned off. Okay, yeah. I think. But I will say, you know, we still. Um, I get invited over to Candy Michener's classroom when 
I the, love the candy. chicks. The chicks oh, are hatched, when they hatch, and we do the chicken dance over there. So it's still That's with us awesome. today. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, I I think it would be a great thing to pass on. It sometimes I've been to lunch at my kids' elementary school, and it can kind of you know things are very controlled, and you got to eat and get out to recess. I think a chicken dance every once in a while would be a great thing. You know, I think it's certainly got an impact on our test scores. Okay. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I want you all to ponder that out there. Chicken dance at lunch. Um, also, I hear you were awarded a Knock Your Socks Off Award. What was that? Do you recall? Um, you know, uh, I've given out plenty of Knock Your Socks Off Awards. And oh, you give these out? Yeah, we give out a Knock Your Socks Off Award. Um, in fact, uh, we gave out two at the last board meeting to Aaron Parman and Steve Marshall. They were named Southwest Washington Principals of the Year. Mm -hmm. But we give them out to, to students and staff uh, for accomplishments or just you know, um, we've had a couple bus drivers recently that have went above and beyond to really um, you know, help our students in really difficult situations. And so we recognize them either at a board meeting or at a staff meeting in front That's of their great. peers. So, yeah. That's yeah, great. it's a knock your socks off award. Nice. Uh -huh. Well, if you got one of those for Mike, you should feel lucky. I am going to leave with a little um, quote here. And um, if you don't know, Jeff Snell will be stepping into the superintendent position next year. And I know you and Jeff have worked closely um, in the last years. I don't know how long Five Jeff's years. been in that position. Yeah. Five years. And I think quite a dynamic team. Um, um, I, I know Jeff and I'm getting to know you and I've seen a lot of what you guys do together and it's pretty great. And when I asked Jeff about Mike, Jeff said, he is an amazing leader who is a strong advocate for all students but has a special place in his heart for our earliest learners. So I think that rings true. It sounds like you started there in the beginning with those early learners and you're seeing them out your window right now. <laughs> yeah, and early learning is so critical in a, um, a student's development. You know, if we could, if we could get all kids uh, coming to us ready to learn at kindergarten, uh, you know, our kids, we'd see amazing results. Mm -hmm. But just as different schools, there's inequity among different schools, kids come to us at all different levels. Yeah. And, you know, uh, parents working with their children, um, a great preschool education. Different home environments. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And to be able to um, provide that type of, of education, uh, an early learning education, so those kids have the basics in literacy and math, mm -hmm. Working with parents mm -hmm. on, you know, how to work with your own children mm -hmm. um, and getting them connected with school. It is a, a critical time. It's a crucial time. Mm -hmm. And there's solid research out there that, that shows if, if we don't get those kids um, up to grade level by, uh, in, in reading by the end of third grade, they don't catch up. They don't catch up. And so that's one of the reasons that we... Uh, uh, started our LEAP program, mm -hmm. you know, a few years mm -hmm. ago. And for those kids that were struggling in kindergarten, we kept them all day. Mm -hmm. And and this year we went to full day kindergarten, but we also have provided preschool now. We've, we've um, got three-year-olds that come to us. And if I had my way, we'd have a, uh, a birthing room in our preschool and we would start <laughs> instru early learning at birth with those kids. and. Uh, uh, working with parents as well to get them as our partners in, in that learning. Well, it is one of those things because we only have, or I should say, teachers have the kids a certain amount of hours, a certain amount of days. So it is super important. That's why, you know, reading to your kids at oh, bedtime yeah. and all of those things that start in the home as well, that some people don't have that opportunity right. and don't have someone to read to them. So um, loving on those kids at school and helping them and trying to bring them up so that they can also meet those standards. And some of the, the programs that, that we've started in connection with our preschool, um, Diane Lawfrey, early learning for, uh, mm -hmm. big learning for little learners and, and bringing parents in as part of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, some, some, some people were brought up in a home where they were read to, there were opportunities to take trips, you know, mm -hmm. which is a great learning experience, but mm -hmm. some didn't. And uh, just to, to make sure that, you know, families understand the importance of 
just reading to your, your mm -hmm. child for 20 minutes a day mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And so early learning is a, a, a passion of mine and uh, um, it'll continue to be a passion Great. of mine. Great. Yeah. Well, I am excited for your new venture. Um, you. Yeah, I'm it, excited too. it will be a change in the Camas School District for sure, and I think it will be a transition. But I'm excited about the opportunity and the knowledge that you're taking to that new position and overseeing so many more students and hopefully positively affecting. If you change the life of one person out there, that's good. That is good, you know, and. Uh, uh, Camus, this will always be a part of who I am. Um, I've made great friendships. I, I still keep in contact with graduates that I had, with, um, students at LACMAS, CHS, and mm -hmm. um, students I worked with in different ways. And that's, I love that. I love running into a uh, former student at Safeway and catching up, seeing what they're doing. That's and um, it's just, uh, you know, being an educator, I, I just can't imagine um, a better school district to to be an educator in than Camus. I just uh, um, I've I've loved my time here. Like I said, uh, you know, I knew it was time that to step down. And Jeff Snell coming in, um, you know, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to take this di district to new levels of excellence. Great. He is a very passionate educator, a very very hard worker, very bright, and, and it creates a great team, you know, and, and we both understand the importance of, of teamwork and building a, a strong team. And so I look forward to seeing what's going to take shape here in Canvas over the next five to ten years. Great. Well, I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you. I appreciate chatting with you and um, reminiscing a little bit and looking forward to your future. Yeah. Thank you, Alicia. You're appreciate welcome. Yeah. All right. This is Just a Girl in Canvas after meeting with Mr. Mike Nerland. Thank you.